and the sensors built into his eyes. So. And so we're kind of uh, a little, obviously, tight on space, but when the kids get home, they can push him down, and he'll spring into action. <laughs> so that's the, that's the way. So we're going to move on to the next room, but I know um, if you wanted to do a quick walk around. Um, oh, and then finally, uh, I don't know if, uh, if you guys are Marvel fans, their Civil War obviously is launching. We've introduced some new characters, but I think one of the coolest things in Avengers series are these 31 inch Marvel figures here. Um, we have Captain America, Iron Man, and the Hulk. Uh, but it's so much fun to see come to life uh, because oftentimes, you know, people look at plush and I think they think it's really easy to execute. It's actually super challenging because you can see some really scary looking plush. <laughs> yes. um, and we were happy that this actually kind of translates similar to the plastic line of the characters. Um, so this is some wave one, some wave two um, of, we have clip on size plush, we have bean size plush, we have jumbo plush, um, we have some pillow plush that aren't featured shown here. We have some uh, feature plush. Cheeks light up um, and say phrases as well. Um, and of course, the characters are quirky, so we want to make sure that even things like hello oh. <laughs> that you could do, you do masks, right? So you can see that the different totems uh, represent each of the different characters. So this is Owlette's totem, uh, Catboy's totem, and Gecko's totem. So there's a secret spinning door here that. Um, once it's in production, you'll be able to spin your character into the world or the playset. And once they spin in, if it's uh, you know someone like Night Ninja, who's one of their arch nemesis, they can actually drop a trap onto the Night Ninja. Um, there's a lift on the side to get to each of the different levels. Because again, similar to the show, if they decide that you know they're going to go with um, Catboy and the Cat Car, which both come with the playset they can launch out. So all these different panels have doors that kind of open and launch out. Um, here's where they would have their team meetings to figure out who's gonna take the lead on the mission at hand. All the lights and sounds are built into this control panel just like in the show. Um, and you can move it, this will be able to swing out um, and you can also remove it and move it around the playset as you wish. Um, you can see here that there's a zip line. Um, Outlet obviously on the show does not need that but we want to replicate the play of zip lining and also for those who do not have wings uh, we have a little apparatus here to kind of zip up and down um, and around. There's going to be uh, climbing holds on the front wall to kind of let Gecko do his super, super sticky climbing. Um, there's a cat ball uh, for training mode for, for Catboy uh, to be able to interact with there. Um, and then once you get the play set, uh, as that comes again with Catboy and the cat car, you can get additional vehicles and, play and figures. So you have Owlette and you can get her with the um, Owl glider, and then you have Gecko, and you can get that with the Gecko mobile. So his is kind of like the amphibious car. Hers is obviously the flying vehicle. So, and his is like the super fast race car. So if it's a land mission, Catboy. If it's in the air, Alette. And if it's by sea, it's Gecko. So this here in the computer. So when you activate it, there is a siren. Um, there's like three different pictures that you can cycle through there, and it gives a little. Voice. Uh, it's kind of randomized where they talk about a crime. There's like all these neat districts in Zootopia, like Tundra Town, Sahara Square. So it'll be like there's you know some sort of crime in this area, uh, and sending the police out to that, like a police dispatcher. Um, so this is the jail cell. It's got a small little door for big, uh, for small animals, and a, a big one for big animals. It also has this jailbreak scenario. If you look, there's some details in there, like a little pickaxe. So there's this hidden button, and then it springs open uh, and the siren goes off there. Um, it has an elevator for the small animals and the big animals too, it, which alternate here. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that's funny. Um, it comes with um, the Clawhauser figure and also this uh, little squirrel in his squirrel helicopter. Uh, and you can use any of the small uh, animals and put them in. I can just drop it in. And all this stuff, created on boards. Uh, if you look, see it's just board and blocks. Once you bring it in, you have more colors to choose from for the art piece. Um, and then also you can create characters, uh, animations. So if you want a coin spinning, 
you're just creating each one of these frames of animation. And then you're applying these animations and R and all that to that level layout to decide what everything looks like. You know, if you don't you don't have to necessarily collect coins. I mean you could collect hearts as your coins if you'd rather do that, uh -huh. you know. So it really gives uh, the user an opportunity to create this game and make it their own. Uh -huh. uh, the white block is actually a story block, so like if I jump in here, a text bubble pops up. So now I can put text there, so it really gives the user a chance to create their own narrative around the game. Uh, and then obviously I got enemy coming at me, those coins I made hearts I can collect, power ups. So this is like for the Minecraft audience. Oh, totally. It's like, yeah. But it gives them that dimension to and, make it their own. And we're really all about like making kids video game rock stars, you know. Kids, when they're younger, they all would love to create games, and they all would love to grow up and create games and become game designers, but there's nothing out there that really, as a young kid, gets you into that and makes right. you think, I can do this. Um, so we totally see that, right? You can keep adding on boards uh -huh. to make big worlds. Uh, if you see here, this one is like a giant level, pretty expansive. All of them are decorated, so if you see, I can jump around through this world and there's like caves down here. So totally making this game. Really um, so we're building it here first. Yeah. And then... Taking a picture, bringing it in, and then you can apply all these art assets you're creating. Yeah. So when you take the picture, that's when it actually comes to life. Yep. Yep. Really cool. And as soon as you bring it in, you can immediately jump in and play the level. That's really amazing. Yeah, you can decide whether the character... And the age are. range is 8 and up. Eight and up, and honestly, we we do testing in schools, we do testing at like science centers and stuff like that, and five, six, seven-year-olds, they enjoy it, they do fine with it. We just think the sweet spot's like eight to ten, where you really can start to use all the tools and really uh, expand on that. I mean, you can create animations, art, that. He says I'm fired up, he zooms around, he wags his tail just like a real pup. It's all the interactivity of the Zoomer brand, so you can pat him on the head and he'll talk to you. When you wave your hand in front of him, he'll follow you around the house just like a real puppy dog. Oh, he didn't make it. I think this one needs another. He didn't make it. He didn't make it. He's taking it. Not making it. Oh, he's taking it. And then nose when it wiggles. Where are you going to go? <laughs> They're all going at the same time. No, you're They're so hilarious. good. You can't roll They're on your hilarious. friend. What are you doing? Quit it. Oh, he went for the headstand. <laughs> on top of his friend. <laughs> now they're just being goofballs. I love these. Oh, that's the best.